This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii is my mainland. I'm today's guest host, Cy Weiss, on behalf of Sierra Club Oahu Group. And we have our guest today, Senator Russell Ruderman, uh, with representing Puna on the Big Island. And we're, today we're going to be talking about industrial hemp, future economic opportunities and challenges within our state, and some of the exciting possibilities that's going to be coming around this year and for uh, the, the, our future here in Hawaii in, in cultivating and growing uh, industrial hemp. Welcome to the show, Senator. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Sai. So uh, when we were talking, you told me you just came back from vacation. And I really appreciate, you know, just kind of stepping into the studio and talking about this. Um, you said on your vacation you had time to see actually a hemp uh, farm in Colorado. Do you mind telling us about what you saw and sure. experienced there? Sure. Uh, we were visiting mostly uh, visiting a national park there, Rocky Mountain National Park, but very close by was the operation of someone I had met a couple of months earlier in Hilo at this cannabis expo. Uh, where different people from around the country were, were gathered to help Hawaii learn about <coughs> hemp in particular. So I had gotten that connection and I visited, got to visit her farm and spa. They do a lot of CBD oil stuff. I was most excited to see the hemp farm, which what I got to visit was a 25 acre parcel that was one of several that they have and where they were growing um, cannab hemp, hemp variety of cannabis. What was unusual to me was to see, it was to learn that it w they weren't growing it for fiber or seed. They were growing it for the CBD content, which, as you may know, the CBD oil is one of a category of compounds that's very exciting in terms of its medicinal properties. So they were growing medicinal hemp, a variety that's um, short, not tall like the big fiber stalks, but their, their end product is CBD oil. And, the person who was hosting me pointed to that field and said, there's a million dollars worth of CBD oil. Wow. And wow. it was uh, very exciting. There was no big 20-foot fences, no barbed <laughs> wire around it, no, you know, right next door there was a, there was a <laughs> plot of corn and here's a plot of hemp right. and it all just seemed so normal and it was just, just remarkable to see it actually happening in the world. But of course, out there a few years ahead of us, I'm very excited to have that begin right. here in Hawaii. Right on, right on. And you know, it's it's something that it's, it's not a new crop, right? It's no. it's something we've been cultivating as humans for thousands of That's years, right. yeah. and it's been a part of you know, the the mast and sails that brought Christopher Columbus to the United States, and you know, uh, some of the ropes they used to help build the pyramids, as well as uh, you know, in today's world, we're using hemp products for um, parts and automobiles. Mm -hmm. I know BMW and Mercedes have been using um, hemp in some of their supply chain. And as well as, you know, it being a, uh, a great health food product, you know, a lot of people are looking for other <coughs> ways to, to eat more healthy and take in the omega-3 fatty acids that we need. And hemp is one of those awesome products that provides some of those nutrients. But it, it, wasn't an easy, it wasn't an easy beginning for, you know, hemp to come reestablish itself back in the United States and even in Hawaii. Um, it's been a long road, you know, with the kind of prohibition around cannabis, specifically cannabis sativa, but primarily, you know, hemp actually got the short end of the stick and where it was compiled with something like that, where it does not get you high, it does not, you know, um, affect you anyway psychoactively. It's, it's, an, it's a plant that provides health benefits to you. So unfortunately, during the 30s with the Marijuana Tax Act, we saw a, uh, a, a prohibition against hemp, which was unfortunate. But now there's been kind of a resurgence with the 2014 Farm Bill that former President Obama signed, which enabled states to actually start growing hemp for academic and research purposes. And so that brings us here today, here in Hawaii, now where we're we're doing such such things with UH Manoa, looking at different cultivars and seeing what is successful and growing in Hawaii. So um, being a legislator at the Capitol, I'm sure you've seen some of the things that have been revolved in some of the bills that have been passed. And most recently, um, this past session, which has been quite adventurous for you and numerous senators, I believe, is, is Senate Bill 773, which you um, got to introduce as well with, um, with Senator um, 
Shima Bukuro as well as Senator Gabbard. Senator Gabbard yeah. And so, uh, you know, you want to tell us a little bit about Senate Bill 773, which is now law that the governor signed in July? Yeah, this was a follow-up. The previous year we had passed a bill that was seemingly as much as we could get that year, which was to begin a pilot program. Uh, and that was going to uh, basically be about research and seed development, trying to develop seed varieties that would be suitable for use in Hawaii, that we could count on for growing well at our latitude, as well as having a small enough content of THC that it was not a legal concern. The, this past bill that you just mentioned, uh, was it 7 7? I, I don't get Senate Bill 7 7. Well, very well. This opens it up starting in January 1st to, uh, to follow up with that pilot project to allow actual hemp farming um, so the Department of Agriculture can contract with various and I believe in a theoretically unlimited number of farmers who want to follow the program and really be in gr begin growing hemp commercially for whatever of the various reasons. You mentioned, you know, nutrition, uh, nutrition for like the seeds and the oil and there's the, a lot of exciting fiber opportunities and manufacturing opportunities and then more recently, I think people have seen the value of medicinal hemp mm -hmm. as being a very exciting thing. You know, you mentioned how uh, its history of being illegal, if I could just as an aside. Sure. Uh, most people, I think, believe that hemp is accidentally illegal because it was related to because it's related to marijuana. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the forces that made uh, that passed the Marijuana Tax Act in 1937, it really was all about hemp. Marijuana is sort of a red herring that's held out there is why we mean to make this plant illegal. But the money to make it illegal came from the timber and oil mm -hmm. industries. Mm -hmm. So it really was a push to suppress hemp production so that the timber and oil wouldn't have that competition. So we've really come full circle in a way of finally addressing the real reason it's illegal, which has really not been talked about. Right. And, and it shows the tremendous economic opportunities. Yeah. A bit of and some of those economic op opportunities are going to happen here in our in our state. Well, so, so um, yeah. you know, with the establishment of the hemp pilot program that is now in full effect, uh, you know, they're looking for someone to actually help manage the program here in Hawaii. I know they're trying to hire somebody, mm -hmm. as well as um, you know, taking the applications in the beginning of 2018. By the way, you can actually look it up on the web for our viewers if you're interested in about the hemp pilot program. There is uh, a URL available on the web that will direct you to um, what is going on and the timeline of the, of the pilot project. Um, it's exciting things, you know, it's something that uh, I myself being, uh, you know, a millennial and, and looking for, you know, ways that we can be kind of more entrepreneurial and start new mm -hmm. things here in Hawaii, I think that we need to establish these kind of new ways of bringing back jobs here to the state and creating more local good paying jobs that will help uh, keep families here because I've noticed one thing with our generation is there's tend to be a brain drain away from Hawaii mm -hmm. and it would be it'd be really nice to see you know some of my friends come home and be able to to get our hands dirty and actually start something start something new I'd love to see that too and you know we we face that challenge throughout our agriculture sector you know because there are very few jobs that pay well enough to justify a cost of living in Hawaii here and uh, this is a tremendous opportunity. I mean, I think our farmers deserve every opportunity and advantage that we can give them. But this is a way to get into some relatively high-tech agriculture mm. and that could result in some f fairly high-income products that could justify our, our time, the cost of land, cost of labor here in Hawaii. Right, right. And, you know, as a natural food um, business owner on the Big Island owning two, uh, you know, natural food store uh, chains, operations, do you see an increase in your supply chain with hemp products and stuff like that? Yes, you know, the interest in it has been growing uh, exponentially the last five years or so. Uh, if for a while it was kind of a gray area. We don't know how legal it is, but no one seems to challenge it. And particularly we've seen it in cosmetic products, hemp oil, we've seen it in protein products, hemp protein and hemp seeds as a protein supplement. Has been, has been very popular. And, and more recently, we're starting to see um, CBD oils and creams for more medicinal applications. And I have to say that there's tremendous interest in it, and there's a tremendous demand for it. And I, I also, you know, from my point of view as uh, being a grocer, I also see a, a 
great demand for Hawaii products in particular. Some people say, how can we possibly compete agriculturally here in Hawaii when any place else can grow it cheaper? But there's a tremendous demand. If we were to have, for example, organic Hawaii grown top quality, whether it's the seeds or the CBD oil or whatever it is, that commands a much higher price than, than the, you know, the, the general commodity market. So I believe there will be a demand for high quality Hawaiian grown and Hawaiian produced products. Awesome. Kind of like Kona Coffee, right? For example, mm -hmm. like we can't really compete on a world scale like uh, some of these uh, other countries do and with mass production of coffee, but we do have a niche product right. that sells very well around the world. And, you know, Hawaii has its marketing, uh, you know, power on, a, you know, to captivate a, a certain market that, that will, uh, it, you know, appreciate Hawaiian hemp. Um, I, I think kind of, Kona Coffee yeah. is a good example because it, its image, and this is Hawaii's brand, is image is top quality, the best, the right. best in the world, and I think Hawaii's hemp products will have the same cachet. Right on, right on. And so, that being said, you know, the tremendous opportunities that are available for our state and, and so, you know, how mo some of these entrepreneurs can get involved. Where do you think some of these development sites, you know, I'm hearing, you know, there's 33,000 acres of A and B land on Maui, and I know you and, uh, you know, various people on the Big Island are looking at a Puna feasibility study, Ag Park. Um, is you, could, could you see industrial hemp being grown there? You know, what is your opinion on where some of these development sites may occur? Well, I don't think that's uh, settled yet. I think it could be almost anywhere, and it's going to end up being where people desire it, you know, where people want it. So it's going to be based on the individual farmers who choose to, to get into this, at least the first phase. You mentioned an ag park. I'm working on an agricultural park in Lower Puna where we have an op opportunity to have abundant, relatively free land, more water than we could possibly use, an available workforce, and also access to ocean water. So it's a combination of resources that I hope to develop. Hemp certainly could play a role in, in such a park. Uh, it depends whether that interest is there in the people on the ground. Right now in the Big Island, I know there's some folks in South Kona and Ka'u that seem to be first out of the gate wow. and wanting to grow some hemp. And there's a couple, several farmers on Maui, and those are the ones that I'm aware of that are kind of getting ready to go as the first of the year when they, when they can begin the commercial production. Great. So. I guess for someone who, let's say, has no, you know, background in agriculture or background in, you know, farming or whatnot, how do you, what would you tell to those people that are interested in hemp how to start? Well, you know, I've, I'm not a farmer. Uh, farmers are my heroes, but I've pretty much failed <laughs> every time I've tried. I would suggest they get involved with someone very knowledgeable and partner with someone who is really knowledgeable. There's, there's so many pitfalls along the way in farming in general, and then you add the additional legal hurdles that you have to go through at this time for hemp. I would suggest partnering with someone who's knowledgeable and already uh, a little bit educated on this, and they certainly can use the help and be better than trying to figure it out for yourself, I would think. Right on, right on. So, you know, with, you know, the hemp cannot just, like you said, hemp cannot just be, I mean, will we'll certainly not just be used for just food products, but also for materials as well. Um, have you have you seen any, like, uh, hemp creed at all popping up on the Big Island or anyone? I know, you know, being from the Big Island myself, you know, there's a very forward-thinking, uh, you know, population on Puna in terms of mm -hmm. how do I make my lifestyle more sustainable? Mm -hmm. And so hempcrete is one way to build a house that is more sustainable. Have you seen any of that in your district at all? I have not yet. You know, I mean, in terms of uh, hempcrete from local products, of course, we're, we're not at that point yet. Um, I'm, I've heard of one or two houses being built of hempcrete statewide. I don't think any are on the Big Island yet, to my knowledge. Uh, so I think that's, that's something that we haven't quite reached that point of. I know there are people looking at the various uses uh, for hemp, and there's tremendous uh, versatility in what you can make it into, in the plastics and oils and things like that. But I do, in terms of what direction Hawaii's market will go, I think that's yet to be decided. Okay, yeah. yeah. 
You know, it's, a, it's such a new and interesting thing that I think, you know, once the industry kind of gains its legs, you know, Hawaii will start to morph in a way to say like, oh, we excel at this product or this exactly. product sells, yeah. uh, you know, uh, better than, you know, let's say, uh, than uh, making t-shirts. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, you know, one of the, you know, there, there will be some way where Hawaii will, yeah. will make its footprint in the market. If I if I were to guess, like we were talking about before, it's hard for Hawaii to compete on commodity things. We're never going to grow competitive rice, for example. Right. But but the specialized things is where we can really excel. So if I were to guess, it would be the nutritional products, the oils, and the medicinal products. Whereas when you think about fiber products like the hempcrete and uh, fabrics. I would think that's probably going to be better off in places like Kansas and Kentucky where they can grow several hundred acres and right have on. a really big right factory on. right there. Sweet. So we would like to talk about this more. We'll be right back. Um, thanks for tuning in to Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii is my mainland, and I'll see you guys in a minute. I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii is my mainland. I'm your guest host, Cy Weiss, and today as our guest, we have Senator Russell Ruderman, and we're talking about industrial hemp. So getting back and diving back into the field, so to say, no pun intended, okay. uh, is that, you know, Hawaii, like Kentucky or like uh, Colorado, you know, states that have already have established hemp, um, in, in some of their, you know, uh, agricultural products. Do you think that uh, hemp could ever be kind of a substitute for something here on the island? Like, let's say we stop importing, you know, cotton for t-shirts, right? Do you think we could make, because, you know, Hawaii has like a big kind of garment industry where we do export some of our, you know, uh, our Aloha shirts or, um, you know, some of the things that we market around t-shirts for, you know, tourist items and whatnot. Do you think we could maybe pull away from cotton and, and do something solely like hemp here in Hawaii? Do you think that's economically feasible at all? Or I think it may be. Uh, you know, if I were to bet on which aspects are going to work in the early game in Hawaii, that's not one of the ones that I would bet on because I think that involves a fairly large-scale manufacturing to make it cost-effective. That doesn't mean it couldn't work. If someone had the passion to make that happen, then yes. And then when, when you had the final product, you could say, you know, um, material made in Hawaii, because we don't have anything like that here. We don't have any cotton grown here or anything like that. Um, so that would be a unique thing. If someone had the passion to do that, I think they could. In terms of things that we could immediately replace, some of the things we use here, I believe that hemp could have some applications for biofuels and therefore theoretically re replace some gasoline and petroleum uses. I also think that um, the most immediate use that I can think of in a low-tech sense is for poultry feed. Mm. You know, I mean, it would be pr it's a pretty low-tech thing to grow hemp for its seeds. And Right now, when in the poultry industry, whether it's eggs or, or chicken um, poultry for meat, the highest cost, I would assume by far, is importing feed. Whereas in this case, you could take some of the marginal portions of your farm, grow hemp seed, and have a virtually free feedstock. That, I mean, when you look at bird seed commercially, it's actually mostly hemp seeds. They boil it so that it's white and not viable. But hemp seed is a perfect bird seed. And so you could change from being your most expensive cost to a virtually free feed source. And then we would have chicken and eggs here in Hawaii at a uh, truly locally 
grown. Um, and I think a much more affordable price point than we have right now with importing all of the feed. Right on. And, you know, I've actually seen some of that, uh, you know, those, some of those locally grown chickens um, just down the street from my parents' house in Puna. That's right. I know um, exactly I, where, you, where you're talking about. Puna <laughs> chicks. Yeah, 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 right. exactly. Yeah, they're, they're right down there, I think, on between, I think, 7th and 8th. Oh, or six and seven right. on HPP, um, but I want to I want to get back to uh, you know hemp as a substitute for something like cotton because one thing that hemp provides is it actually provides two hundred and fifty percent more fiber per hectare compared to cotton. So that's mm -hmm. a big that's a big improvement in mm -hmm. in production for the business owner and for the environment. Meaning mm -hmm. that the footprint of of that crop is much less than if you were to grow like let's say cotton. cotton. So uh, do, you, do you think that we could, maybe not just on Hawaii, but on a global scale, do you think that would help reduce our carbon footprint? Oh, on a global scale, absolutely, I think it can. Uh, and it has so many advantages because it grows more easily than cotton. Uh, as you said, it produces more fiber per acre, but also requires much less inputs in terms of fertilizers and in terms of herbicides. Hemp is essentially a weed. It grows on very marginal areas and it doesn't need a lot of care and feeding along the way. And we've seen that. That's been proven worldwide. So if we could replace some of our cotton acreage with hemp acreage, it would be a huge ec ecological benefit. And worldwide, as I mentioned, I'm not convinced that Hawaii will be the place to grow the fibers, but worldwide has tremendous benefit for, doing, for, for replacing cotton, replacing oil and biofuels right. like that. And I think, I think some of the... Uh, now that if we, you know, places like the UK that have been successful in growing uh, industrial hemp and they've been doing all sorts of projects with building materials and whatnot. Um, and other countries now, um, you know, whole, actually, excuse me, but uh, the US is, you know, our own country is actually one of the few countries that does not allow hemp cultivation. Oh, yes. So, you know, if we as, you, as a country start to allow hemp cultivation, we'll join the rest of the world mm -hmm. in growing this, um, you know, magnificent s s crop. And I think that once that happens, then we can bring everyone on board. There's the marketability around it. Um, and I think it really ultimately comes down to marketing because we have to educate people. We have to tell people that, you know, what you're buying is not only healthier for you, but it's also healthier for the planet. Mm -hmm. And I think that getting that voice out there and, t and letting people know, I think that will change some of the buying habits um, of, of, of consumers. So you know, I, th I think marketing, uh, you're right aside about how important marketing is. With this particular product, it's going to be easier than with most because for various reasons, people have a tremendous appetite for hemp products. They don't, there's a large portion of the population that already wants to buy this without having, without having had this marketing program in place yet. People want to support it. They sense what it really means. They're excited about legal hemp after all this time being illegal and they know about the nutritional benefits of it and the ecological benefits. Strangely, the demand for it is already there. And you know, we were talking a minute ago about some of the uh, ways it can replace other, other products we use. We learned in one of our Senate committees, we heard about a farm, a f small farmer in France. I think he had a five acre farm and he used one quarter acre to grow hemp and produced on his farm in a low tech still method, produced all his fuel for his tractors from that wow. one quarter acre of hemp. So this is, this is a small farmer who has eliminated his fuel costs. Yeah. And it's just tremendous what that could mean for a farmer. Yeah, and you can only imagine some of the possibilities. I mean, it would, it would be phenomenal. Imagine if we had an you know, airline industry that was all powered by locally grown hemp, you mm. know, moving, and p moving people and goods around yeah. by our own fuel. You know, that's to me is, 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 is uh, you know, closing the loop, so to mm -hmm. say, in that's terms right. of. Especially for us. Huh? Yeah. You know, you had mentioned um, earlier some, some of the, the bigger picture things about, about this. Um, it's striking to me that this is something that it's been suppressed for so long for various reasons. But really, this is one of the most remarkable plants on Earth. You mentioned earlier how it's grown, been grown for thousands of years, and it's been grown in hundreds of cultures. Hmm. And what that says to me, even without knowing anything about it scientifically or botanically, 
something that has spread around the world that has that has become a traditional use, a traditional crop for hundreds of different cultures, it, it speaks so much about what its value really is. And this is even before we've come to this, this, this new wave that we're on now of understanding some of its medicinal properties. You know, even before that, just based on oil, fiber, recreational uses, nutrition, it's already was established in hundreds of places as one of the most useful plants on the planet, really. So it's really exciting to think that in the next few years, maybe we'll get past this legal challenge that has prevented its p potential right. from helping our planet. And, and, and not only that, but it's also been a part of America's history. It's been part Absolutely. of our history. The U.S. Constitution yeah. is written on hemp. You know, the, the word uh, canvas is from, you know, the, right. the root canvas. word of cannabis, which means, you know, which is hemp, which primarily hemp was used as a canvas, as That's something right. to either, you know, write on or paint on. Uh, George Washington famously said everyone should plant hemp everywhere. Right. And, um, yeah, it's very, it's very exciting. Right. So it's getting back to our roots, so to say, mm -hmm. is what, you know, is what we need to do. Uh, you know, just talking maybe some more of the economics around it. One of the things that uh, when a farmer looks at when they go for hemp, when they grow, when they grow hemp, is that they look at okay, what kind of products can I sell? Uh, you know, my my what can I what can I produce from my hemp crop that will sell? And so it's primarily the seed and the fiber. So uh, what a farmer does is they'll either grow it for seed or for fiber. But what some of them are learning is it's more economical to do both, even though mm -hmm. it's a little harder. You get more bang for your buck per um, acre, uh, and you get a bigger return on your investment. So. Sure. Um, I hope that you know our farmers will 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 actually do both. You know because we have limited land, right? Mm. So you know we don't have you know wide swaths of like uh, acres, like let's say in the Midwest, you know where they're able to do that. So I think being efficient with our land use, um, minimizing our footprint, and just producing something local that people can use and potentially export as well, I think will you know be a win-win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know and, and you know, I really, really do appreciate, you know, uh, what you do at the legislator in terms of championing uh, hemp alongside also Representative uh, Cynthia Thielen. She's been a long advocate of industrial hemp, as well as uh, Mike Gabbard as well, Senator Mike Gabbard. So, you know, all of you guys, you know, I really appreciate what you've done and looking, you know, our generation, you know, this future generation of Hawaii are looking for a, an economic opportunity where we can dive in. And I think this mm. provides you know, uh, this world, this bill will help provide a kind of pathway to um, starting a new economic industry. So it's exciting. It's mm -hmm. exciting to see about, um, you know, there is there is one thing with, with hemp is that, uh, you know, there are still legal hurdles. It's not easy. So just because the pilot project is there, the pilot uh, hemp project is there, there are hurdles, and talking to researchers here in the field, they have told me specifically that the DEA has given them a, a hard time on importing the seeds, and mm -hmm. it's even been harder to import the seeds from state to state, ironically, mm -hmm. not internationally, but from state to state, it's been even harder. So, you know, I'm hoping that those uh, hurdles will get, uh, you know, we'll, we'll cross over those hurdles together. You know, some of these regulations will uh, start to start to dissolve and people will be able to grow this more freely and we'll be able to improve our economy here in Hawaii. And once again, thank you, Senator Russell Ruderman, for joining our show and talking about industrial hemp and the future economic opportunities and challenges here in Hawaii. Thank you for having me, Sam. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Thanks.